2020, it disbursed a total sum of 1.2 trillion Naira's revenue in August 2024 to the federal government, states and local government councils in the country. This distribution was announced by September's 2024 FAC meeting in Abuja in a statement signed by the Director of Press and Public Relations at the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation, Mr. Bawa Bokwa. The figure represents a decrease of 11%. That's 155 billion Naira from 1.35 trillion Naira disbursed uh, to the three tiers of government. According to the Office of the AGF, the uh, revenue comprised statutory revenue of 186.6 billion naira, value added tax of 533.89 billion naira, electronic money transfer levy revenue of 15.02 billion naira, exchange difference revenue of 468.2 billion naira. Analysis of communique indicated that the revenue of 2.2 trillion naira was available in August 2024 from the 1.203 trillion naira total distributable revenue. The federal government received a total of 374.9 billion naira. State governments got 422.86 billion naira. Local government councils received 306.5 billion naira. And a total sum of 99.4 billion naira, 13% of mineral revenue, was shared with benefiting states as derivation revenue. And this is the second consecutive monthly slowdown in Nigeria's inflation figures after easing in the previous month, standing at 32.15% for the month of August 2024. On a year-on-year -year basis, inflation was 6.35 percentage points, higher compared to 25.80 recorded in the August 2023 figures. Month-on-month -month basis, the headline inflation rate declined by 0.06% recorded in August 2024. And our flagship business show, Business Nigeria, Chief Executive Officer of Kauri Assets Management Limited, Mr. Justin Chuku, commended this development and highlighted factors that contributed to this decline. I actually predicted that we we're going to see a further moderation in inflation for the month of August. And I wasn't, uh, I, I was so wrong when I, uh, the figure came out because you have to recognize the structure of the economy. More than 50% of the consumer uh, price basket is food. And if you look at uh, food inflation, uh, we saw that food inflation dropped materially. Food inflation in July was 39.53%. It dropped to 37.52%. That was a consistent drop because previously, in the month of uh, uh, June, food inflation was about 40.88%. So uh, that consistent drop is what drove inflation down from 33.4% to 32.15%. The major drop we saw in food inflation is coming from uh, food crop, which is the basic food that we produce here. So we saw a material increase in food. Uh, normally during the harvest season, you see a lot of food that is produced coming to the market. And because the farmers do not have solid capacity, what they do is that it becomes a buyer's market ordinarily. We should actually see the more, a more significant drop in food prices, assuming food production was going on in all parts of the country. But because of the insecurity we have today, food production is not at the, it's optimal. So it's not strange, it's not unexpected that inflation dropped in most of July, August. But bear in mind that that drop was driven solely by decline in food prices. The Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency of Nigeria, Smedan, says it will partner with the German International Agency and others to boost micro small and medium enterprises development in the country. Director General of Smedan, uh, Dr., um, Dr. Mr. Charles Odi, uh, disclosed this in a statement in Abuja. The DG said the organizations were set to host the 2024 National MSME Conference that would ensure the partnership themed Grow Nigeria, Sustaining and Innovation and Digitally Driven Economy. The Smedan boss described the event as most significant convergence of entrepreneurs, policymakers, enablers, public and private sector stakeholders and supporting institutions in the country. And of course, SMEs in the ecosystem. He said the conference will be driving development in the MSME sector with the eight key sectors identified in growing Nigeria's strategy to strengthen Nigeria's local production potential and raise export revenue. The dollar yielded some of its overnight gains today while Asian stocks struggled as traders weighed the odds of a supersized Federal Reserve interest rate quotes. Japan's Nikkei stock coverage climbed uh, much as, uh, as much as 1.3% early on due overnight weakness in the yuan, but prior losses 
and our weakness with the uh, to just 0.3 percent as the currency rebounded. Now the China's blue chip slipped 0.18 percent after coming back online following a holiday extended weekend, and Taiwan returned from a day off to tumble 1 percent. Australia's benchmark sagged 0.1 percent. MSCI's broadest index of Asian Pacific shares outside Japan slid 0.27 percent. Hong Kong. And South Korea were among major markets closed for the holidays. Wall Street finished nearly unchanged, falling to uh, sustained early momentum that pushed the S&P and Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, to the 0.55% uh, and S&P 500 features pointed 0.06% higher. Pan-European stock 500 were weaker, though down 0.19%. British inflation held steady in August but rose in the services sector, which the Bank of England closely watches, adding to the bets in financial markets that the central bank will keep interest rates on hold on Thursday. Latest data from the Office of the Statistics uh, reveals that uh, the consumer price inflation of 2.2% in July was unchanged. The BOE caught interest rates to 5% on August 1st, in an expectation that inflation will hit 2.4% in August by rising to around 2.75% by the end of 2024. Service inflation also uh, uh, ended by 2024, as uh, indicators of domestic price pressures rose to 5.6% from 5.2%. Report also uh, shows that airfares rose 22.2%, the second largest since the record began in 2001. Chief Economist at KPMG UK, Mr. Yao Salfin, noted that today's data may unlock another rate caught by Bank of England tomorrow. Indonesia's central bank surprises markets by delivering its first rate courts in more than three years, moving to bolster growth in southeastern Asia's large economy uh, ahead of a start of an expected easing circle in the United States. Bank Indonesia unexpectedly trimmed the benchmark rate by 25 basis points to 6%, its first rate court since February 2021. It also cut overnight deposits facility and lending facilities rates by the same amount 5.25% and 6.75% respectively. Ukraine's gross domestic product rose by 3.9% year-on-year in the first eight months thanks to billions in foreign financial aids and Ukrainian businesses' adaptability and resilience. The economy returned to growth in 2023, rising by 5.3%. First Deputy Prime Minister and Economic Minister said better access to electricity over the last month had made uh, drive economic growth and boosted business and consumer confidence in the near term. She added that the transport and building sectors as well as retail had helped drive the economic expansion from January to August. Ukraine's economy has been devastated by Russian invasion with GDP falling about 29% in 2022. And crude oil prices fell, down to, fell lower today after two sessions of gains as weak macroeconomic data weighed on demand of setting the possible disruption of violence in the Middle East and potentially a bullish impact of an expected U.S. rate court. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude sells for $70, uh, 43 cents, with a downward price margin of 1.07%. Brent also experienced a decline of 0.95% to sell at $73 per barrel. Body Light is down 2.84%, selling at $78.62. OPEC Basket is up 0.48%, selling at $72.70.